Hi everyone, this is Aaron. Today I want to go over one of my older projects. This is an automatic cat feeder I built about a year and a half ago already. So I built this the summer before my junior year just as a way to feed our cat while we were going on vacation. I thought it would be a fun project to do during the summer and it turned out pretty successful and we've been using it since uh, regularly and it's worked really well. So let me just quickly show you how you use it. So you put the food for the first meal in here and you put the food for the second meal in here. So uh, using it's not on right now but using these buttons you can adjust the temperature it holds the food at it has a solid state refrigeration unit. You can adjust what time each door opens and closes and you can select how many days it waits before the doors open. So uh, let's go over the parts here. These things here are a couple of hobby servos that you might find in a model airplane or RC airplane, but I just repurposed them for opening and closing these doors. Here are just a couple wooden dowels I zip tied to them. Uh, in here is actually a brownie pan I purchased off Amazon. Uh, this is just some uh, insulation which I got from Home Depot. And here is a temperature sensor. It's an analog temperature sensor. I soldered it to a little bit of perf board and that monitors the temperature because, like I said, it's refrigerated. And this right here mounts, uh, mounts the cooler. So let's look at what that is. So anyone who builds PCs will recognize what this is right here. This is a Evo 212 CPU cooler, but instead of it using it to cool a CPU, I'm using it to cool a Peltier unit. So this is what a Peltier unit looks like. It's basically a solid state uh, cooler. So you apply a current to it and it will pump heat from one side to the other. In this case, it pumps heat out of the brownie pan and pumps it to this heat uh, CPU cooler where the is just blown off into the air. Okay, let's go over the rest of the parts. Um, here we have a doorbell that alerts my cat when the doors are opening, which you'll see later when I make a little demonstration of it. Uh, here's some the LCD which connects to the microcontroller and here's a little board I made with some buttons that also connect to the microcontroller for controlling the LCD. Okay, let's go over the electronics in the back. So here's what the unit looks like from the back. This is a PC power supply, as I'm sure many of you recognize. And it actually turned out to be the perfect power supply for this project because uh, the microcontroller and the LCD and the servos all need 5 volts. But the refrigeration unit and the doorbell here need 12 volts. And a PC power supply has a 3.3 volt rail, a 5 volt rail, and a 12 volt rail. So it has everything that we need. Here is a, a PC power supply enclosure, but there's no power supply inside. Instead, I'm just using this uh, enclosure to house uh, the microcontroller and all the other electronics parts, just, just for safety since it's metal. Okay, let's go ahead and open this one up. So here's what it looks like inside. Uh, right here is a AVR microcontroller. This is actually the same exact microcontroller used in the Arduino Uno. And I actually did use the Arduino IDE to program it. So if you have an Arduino Uno, it will be exactly identical to this little board I, I have here. I believe it's called the Freeduino or something like that. But that's just all I had on hand. So this is what the microcontroller looks like. It's in 28-pin um, dip package, which is really nice if you need to replace it. This here is a real-time clock, I, uh, which I'll talk about more in a moment. This is a MOSFET, which controls the refrigeration unit. I'll talk about more about that more as well. And buried in here in tape is just a little TO92 transistor I'm using as a low side switch for the doorbell, since my doorbell needs 12 volts, and I'm controlling it with a 5 volt signal from the microcontroller. Okay, let me explain, uh, let me get into more detail. Okay, so the microcontroller here is responsible for everything. Uh, it controls the LCD, it renders the LCD menu, it pulls these buttons for user input, it controls the position of these servos, controls the doorbell, um, and controls the refrigeration unit through this MOSFET here. 
uh, and it also talks to this I squared C clock to get the time. So let's start with that. When you first turn the unit on, the microcontroller is coming out of a reset state. So it has nothing in its memory since RAM is volatile, and it has no idea what time it is. But we need to know what time it is to know when to open and close these doors. So to get the time, it communicates with this little chip here. This is a DS1307 real-time clock chip, uh, which follows the I squared C protocol. So even when this doesn't have power, this little lithium battery keeps this oscillator, uh, this crystal oscillator running, and it counts uh, the oscillations and knows exactly what time it is. So when the microcontroller turns on and uh, requests the proper register for the time, the chip will respond back with the proper time, even though it just it doesn't um, didn't have any power for a while. So now our microcontroller knows exactly what time it is. So like I said earlier, the microcontroller loses all its memory when power goes off. So as soon as you turn the power on, it has no idea uh, as well what time you programmed these doors to open previously. So I actually implemented in my program uh, EEPROM uh, time save. So whenever you change the time using this little menu here, it writes the save time to the EEPROM, so when the unit loses power and comes back on, it still knows what time you set the door to open. So that gives you power failure protection if the power goes off for maybe just a few seconds and then comes back on or something, and it'll still remember what time it is. I mean, what time the uh, you set the doors to open. So right after it gets a time, it then reads what time was set from the EEPROM. And if you change the time again, it'll read the new time from the EEPROM. Now that the microcontroller uh, knows what time set, uh, what time the doors are set to open, and it knows what time it currently is, it now just waits until uh, constantly checks to see if it's the right time to open the doors. But that's not all our program does. Our program also has to control the refrigeration unit. So it also reads that temperature sensor that's in here and figures out how much power to give to the uh, Peltier cooler right here. And that's where this MOSFET comes in. This Peltier cooler consumes probably around 6-7 amps at 12 volts. And this microcontroller outputs about, um, at most, maybe 20 milliamps at 5 volts. So we can't directly power our Peltier unit off this. So instead, we have this MOSFET here, which we're using as a low side switch to control, uh, to power the Peltier unit. So the Peltier unit gets 12 volts at whatever amperage it wants, but it's controlled from a 5 volt, a really uh, low current 5 volt signal from the microcontroller. And also, I should, as I mentioned, we need to make sure the food isn't too cold or too hot based on our preset temperature. So based on the current temperature and what temperature the user set, uh, the microcontroller will adjust the PWM duty cycle going to the micro, or going to the MOSFET to decide how much how much power is needed to um, to either cool the thing more or keep the keep the temperature equal or it will turn off altogether if it's too cold. So in that way, we can save energy because this thing doesn't run constantly. And then once it reaches a desired temperature, it just varies a PWM duty cycle to keep the temperature of the food in equilibrium. So I wanted to better explain the whole idea of using a PWM signal to control the temperature of the cat feeder. So I turn the cat feeder on and let it run for 10 or 15 minutes to let it reach the desired temperature I have set. And then I just hooked an oscilloscope probe to the gate of the MOSFET. So the gate of the MOSFET is where our output of our microcontroller goes in the input of our MOSFET. So that's the signal that controls the MOSFET. When the microcontroller outputs 5 volts onto the gate, the MOSFET's turned on and it lets current pass into the, um, into the Peltier cooler. And when the uh, microcontroller outputs 0 volts and puts down the gate of the MOSFET, the MOSFET's off and the refrigeration unit's off as well. So basically we're just using the MOSFET as a solid state relay and because we're turning a high current device on and off 
with a low current signal from a microcontroller. Let's look at the oscilloscope trace now. So if you look, this will confirm what I said earlier about letting the, the device run for 10 or 15 minutes to let the temperature reach equilibrium. And you know that because if the temperature was too warm, the cooler would, the microcontroller would turn on the cooler 100%, so it would just be a straight line at 5 volts. And if it was too, um, too cold, the cooler would be off completely, so the microcontroller would spit out 0 volts to the gate of the MOSFET. But because it's basically the microcontroller is trying to keep our temperature in equilibrium, it's instead varying the duty cycle of the signal to keep the temperature in equilibrium. And if you look, our frequency is about a thousand hertz. So it's turning the refrigeration unit on and off about a thousand times a second. This top bit represents the amount of time the cooler is on, and this bottom bit represents the amount of time the cooler is off. So by switching the cooler on and off uh, uh, really fast, we can both save power and at the same time by adjusting the duration we keep it off, we can make sure our temperature stays at the exact temperature we have set. I would also like to point out that a PWM signal is the same way the microcontroller controls the position of the servos. By changing the duration, uh, the PWM or the signals off represents a different position in the servo. So a PWM signal is actually very prevalent in this, um, in this project. A couple other things I wanted to point out about the electronics is this microcontroller is being programmed through serial with this FTDI chip I bought. So it's converting serial into USB and allowing me to program it through the Arduino IDE. And if you notice, I'm actually just using Cat6 Ethernet cable for a lot of this because I'm actually pretty cheap. And I just had it lying in the basement. But it's working pretty well. Okay, now let me show you how you actually use a menu to program it. So you turn it on. First, I'll show you how we can adjust the temperature. You hold down this button. You can set what temperature you want it. So let's set it for 40. You can also select uh, what time you want each door to open and close. So let's hold this one. So it's in 24 hour time. Let's set the first door for to open at 3 o'clock and close at 3.30. Let's select the second door. I don't know. Let's open at, what would that be, 9.30 and close at 10. So that's how you program it. You can also select how many days you want it to delay before opening it. This, um, first of all, I can turn the doors on and off. Both are on. I can select how many days I want to delay the first door. So I can, um, oh, I'll skip it. So, for the second door, let's say I wanted to wait two days before it opened. You can select that as well. After five day delay, enter. So that's how you can uh, adjust the times and the temperature. To also manually open the door, if you hold these two buttons down, the doors will manually open. Hold to manually open doors and the door should open. So you can put the food in, and then it will close in 15 seconds. And it should close. So that's how you use it, and when you're not pressing any buttons, it'll just scroll through information. Like both doors are on, no delay. Uh, been on for 132 seconds, uh, cooler's running at 100%, current time, current temperature, what time you currently set, and then it will loop again. Here it is in action. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed my cat feeder project.
I will upload my source code and I'll link in the description. Um, just to note though, I taught myself how to program in C making this project, so I'll admit, looking back on it, the program's a little crude. It's a little difficult to understand. It's not not programmed using the best practice. Like, there's a lot of global variables. Um, it's not really that obvious. A lot of void functions, so... And a lot of functions that modify global variables, so it's probably pretty difficult to understand. So, you're welcome to reuse it if you want. Use it for your own project. But if you're planning on modifying it significantly, you may find it pretty difficult to, to modify because it's pretty complicated. Um, but if you just want to use it as is, I've used it for months. It works flawlessly. There aren't really any bugs. So that's, that's it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, more projects should be on the way. Let me know what you think. Uh, any questions about parts or anything like that, let me know. All right, thank you.